Hello, everybody. What is up? What is up? As you know, we just had my convention, right? Hawaii PopCon. Second year that I'm throw I threw a convention with a couple of my partners, Aloha Card Shop and myself, and it was amazing. First year was great. This year was even crazier. Obviously, we had a lot of content creators and influencers come down. We had voice actors. We had artists that did Lorcana artworks. We had the voice of Toph, right, down here as well. And of course, Mitsuhiro Arita, right, one of the legends, one of the goats of uh, Pokemon. All right, was down here doing signings at our event, and it was spectacular. All right, I saw a lot of people doing trades, buying, selling, you know, hanging out, even uh, you know, watching some of the cool events we had, like uh, Matt Stoney eating a bunch of musubis. I think he ended up eating. We had now, granted, the musubis were really big. It was a lot of rice. He had, he actually managed to do like 12, 12 or 13 musubis in like five minutes, which is uh, pretty crazy. I don't think uh, those are normal sized musubis, especially with that much rice. But uh, yeah, it was just so cool seeing all the kids, parents, and everybody coming down to kind of enjoy the entire event, right? Whether it's for cards, whether it's to meet, you know, your favorite, you know, YouTuber or content creator or voice actor, yeah, or maybe just coming down to be a vendor. Uh, it was an amazing event, all right? Definitely something that we hope to continue doing moving forward. Right, and making it even better every single time. But like I said, highlight being Mitsuhiro Arita coming down for the event was amazing. I got a couple of things, you know, as you can see here, signed by him. Both of these are first edition heavy packs, as you can see by the first edition stamp down below. All right, beautiful, beautiful packs here. All right, they're heavies. So, you know, more of a reason to not have an itch and open it now that I have it signed. Though, I told myself, even though I do open these, I'll probably just keep the pack arts anyways. So, I don't know, maybe we'll be tempted to open these here. But these are still from the box that we've seen all the other hollows pulled. And we have not seen a Zard. Have not seen a Blastoise. Have not seen a Venusaur. So pretty improbable to have a box, a first edition base that does not have any starters inside. Really, really low probability of that happening. So to have these two packs signed here, this one in gold, right, made out to the wife. Yeah, and this one uh, to me. On top of that as well, of course, I had a couple other things signed as well. One of my most prized possessions. You guys always ask me, you know, show some cool things in your collection. I have shown this item in my collection before. And if you guys look back at all the streams and videos, you will always see it behind me here. This is my Costco blister. All right, I ended up getting this signed and sketched by Arita himself. As you guys can see, all right, he did sign the middle section all right, in Japanese, in English, and put the date there. And then he did do a little bit of a sketch as well yeah, of his Squirtle, which is one of my favorite Pokemon. Cool part about this, uh, and what I really wanted was... You know, it's random which pack is going to be on the front because as you can see, there's 10 base set packs here. But randomly, this has my favorite line, Squirtle, Mortar and Blastoise. So having that Blastoise pack there, I was like, huh, Blastoise pack there. There's a War Turtle right here. I mean, it's just fitting to have a Squirtle on the top left. So this item all right, has definitely been upgraded. All right, very few times you can actually upgrade an item in the first little collection. So all right, definitely upgraded this. All right, an item I will... Be keeping pretty much forever, all right? Pretty much forever. All right, cool item. If you guys have never seen this before, you can see the item number on the top. This was actually an item that they sold at Costco back in the 90s, all right? They put 10 base set packs and they put it on the shelf, all right? At Costco, you could just go in and buy it. Nowadays, these are actually super rare to find just for the simple fact that, you know, most of the times, you know, within the last couple of decades, people have opened these and just sold the packs, right? Or people have opened them and, you know, seen what the cards are in the pack. So, super rare item. On top of that as well, you know, you can see there's a little bit of yellowing on the uh, the plastic here, but not a lot. A lot of times, this kind of product over the years, over the decades, gets oxidized and really yellow. So, I'm really happy that this one, uh, you know, didn't really have that. All right, just a little bit, as you can see back here in the top left corner. But for the most part, it's, in a, it's a beautiful condition uh, item. And to now have it signed by Arita at this event was uh, amazing. All right, absolutely amazing. I got one more, right? But this one, okay, I have two Charizard blisters, okay? I mean, I have two Costco blisters. This one, now, the only thing with this one is this one does have a little crack here, right? And this is my second Costco blister here. Uh, he did sign it as well, but instead of putting a... You know, obviously a Squirtle, he did a Charizard with flames, and he actually did the Charizard pack art, which was uh, pretty cool. Uh, definitely pretty cool. I don't think the camera's doing it justice here. But um, yeah, this one this one doesn't have any yellowing, actually. You can see this one. You can see this one doesn't have that oxidization, you know, the yellowing that the other one has, but does have a couple cracks in the blister. All right, that's all. A couple of cracks here and there. All right, but I figured definitely an item to, uh, you know, get signed as well. So super amazing one. Yeah, another one to... Uh, 
having the collection. All right, this one maybe I'll, I'll I'll consider letting go. You know, if I'm able to maybe trade into another item that you know I really want for my personal collection, but nonetheless, uh, amazing. All right, absolutely amazing. All right, that one was actually signed on the sixth. Uh, our event was two days, the sixth and the seventh. This one was done on the seventh, so might end up keeping both. All right, and maybe look one of the few Costco blisters in existence and see if somebody has a Venusaur pack art and maybe get the trifecta. I don't know. All right, I have no clue. I have I don't know, but. Uh, yeah, super cool, super amazing. All right, last but not least, I did manage to get a few cards with some sketches signed. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and showcase it here for you guys, all right? <clears throat> if you guys remember, I did own, I say did because I don't currently, I did own a legendary collection Charizard in a pristine 10. Let me see if I can get this, show you a picture here. Maybe I can't find it. Well, I have a picture. It's posted up on social media. All right, here we go. Here's the uh, here's the amazing uh, Population 1, right? One of the cleanest uh, in existence. Because as you know, Legendary Collection Reverse Hollows uh, definitely are known to have a lot of issues since there's so much hollow on the card, right? But um, this is a pristine 10. Uh, with subgrades, by the way. Reverse Hollow Legendary Collection Charizard. Now, I did the ballsy and gutsy thing of cracking it out. Yes, you heard me right. I cracked it out. I cracked it out, and you know, I was like, you know what? It's one of my favorite cards in the collection. I, I, I gotta have the legend himself, right? The Charizard artist himself signed it, so that's what ended up happening. So uh, I, I did, I did crack it out, and it did get signed by Arita, as you can see, signed there in Japanese, English, with the date, a sketch of a Charizard, right? And some, uh, some other Japanese. Uh, he made it out to me here, right, vertically in Japanese, and got it signed. And from there, CGC has just started doing a signature series where they're starting to encapsulate auto cards, yeah, or signed cards. So hopefully, right, CGC was at the event. Uh, I was able to submit it. Hopefully, it will be coming back. Hopefully, as a pristine 10, right? And with that signature series label, I believe the label looks a little different as well. And it will also say Mitsuhiro Rita on it. And it will put the date, I think, as well. So that's what I heard. They were telling me about it. So I was like, all right, let's do it. Um, so I did send it off with them. Uh, they did take it home already and when it returns I will show you guys. Okay. I, I want to show you guys what it looks like and uh, Obviously, I'll, I'll be featuring it, but all right absolutely amazing card absolutely amazing card in the collection Last but not least had to have a first edition Charizard done, all right? So first edition Charizard this was actually if you guys remembered uh, about two years ago, right? It might be over two years ago Logan Paul actually had a collection of first edition cards and he submitted the entire collection of cards to get graded with CGC after they were graded with CGC he held on to them for a little while and then he did a big whatnot stream where he auctioned off all the cards I managed to snipe both of the first edition Charizards from that auction right which were pretty much 9-5 gem mint 9-5 condition right in that collection there uh, I was able to get both of those Zards uh, he signed the case and I had them all this time and I was like don't really need Logan Paul's signature two percent Zards were in beautiful condition But I don't, I don't really need I don't really need Logan Paul's signature You know, what I mean might be kind of cool right whether you like him or not to have somebody that's uh, famous or infamous right out there signature So we cracked it right we cracked the case right and I was like, you know what? I don't want his signature on the slab. I want to read a signature on top crack the case crack the card got it signed Got it submitted as well, so uh, I'm looking forward to this bad boy coming back from CGC as well in that beautiful case. All right, when it comes back, I will uh, I will showcase it to you guys. But um, yeah, some beautiful cards, right? Some beautiful items and some amazing memories. Um, some absolutely amazing memories that were made this past weekend here. I, I even got to uh, we even got to go. Uh, what is it? Uh, jet. I went jet skiing. All right, took, I took some of them out. All right, we went jet skiing with uh, Arita. Right, jet skiing, parasailing with Arita, which was kind of cool. Yeah, invited, <coughs> pardon me. Invited some friends and other content creators. Pat Flynn was there. Unlisted Leaf was there. You can see the whole crew there. Right, but we went jet skiing with them. All right, unfortunately the conditions weren't good enough, so nobody got to go parasailing. But went jet skiing. Was kind of epic. Right, was kind of epic. He he did fall off his uh, jet ski one time. Right, but uh, he was a pretty good swimmer, so uh, yeah, he was a okay. But uh, that was pretty cool. After that, took him over to Zippy's. Right, so got a uh, better picture with him as well. Right, but we went to Zippy's, had to take him somewhere to eat after, so we went to Zippy's, which was pretty cool. And then that evening, he actually did an uh, art event. Right, he did an art event. Right, we had a lot of people come by. It was more of a uh, private art event, 
right? Well, not really private. You could buy tickets to it, but it was much more uh, intimate, I, I guess you can say, right? Like under 100 people uh, got to attend this, right? So you can see he was doing, he was doing, uh, let me see if I can get the, the right light in here for you guys. He was doing this sketch of a Western dragon, right, at the event. So he did a live sketch for like over an hour and uh, it was a really cool event. Uh, a lot of the items and artists were also there as well. And he did a uh, he did a sketch of a Western dragon, and then after that, uh, he got auctioned off as well. And I think the the ending auction I wasn't there for the auction, but I let my buddy uh, Gem and Pokemon Zach, uh, you know, I let I let him take the final bid and final auction, which ended up at ten thousand dollars. And this uh, the entire proceeds went to uh, breast cancer. All right, so it was donated to breast cancer. So super cool event. Right, it was amazing seeing all the other artists there, you know, and uh, the silent auctions that we did. It was all for a great cause and a great event overall. Very, very fun evening there. But uh, yeah, really cool dragon that he drew. And I found out later that obviously this year is Year of the Dragon. So that's why he did a sketch of a dragon. But also, that's the reason why he did a sketch of a dragon at our Hawaii Popcorn event too. And I found out that this is the pair. He did a sketch on the first day. Uh, he did like a one hour demonstration and sketched a Eastern dragon. And during this intimate event on Monday, he did a Western Dragon. So these two dragons were a pair, all right? The Western Dragon, he auctioned off, obviously, like I said there, right, for charity. And I believe this one is also being auctioned off on his uh, personal website, right? I think it's up for a couple days, right, from this moment here, right? Another day or so. And I think that's also being going, going to charity as well. So super cool. Really, really cool. It was definitely uh, awesome to have him at the event. Definitely awesome to hang out with him. And yeah, his, his English was great. Right, so it was uh, pretty easy to kind of communicate with him, but overall, definitely an experience and memories that I will, uh, I won't forget, honestly. Yeah, but yeah, there's my show and tell for the weekend. All right, for those of you guys that missed out at the uh, for the for the convention, don't worry, we'll be doing more in the future. All right, maybe we'll have a Rita come back again, but we are definitely minimally planning to do this event every year. Right, we're gonna be throwing this convention every single year. We want it to be. Uh, a, more of a pop culture event, right? It's hard to explain until you actually go to the event and experience it. It's not like your usual Collecticons. It's not like your usual card shows. It's a different vibe, right? Definitely a very, very different vibe, right? To have it here in Hawaii, to give you guys a destination to go to, bring people from Asia, like Japan over here, pe bring people from the mainland here, and to be the first uh, convention every year is and was our goal. And I think we've been doing very good in succeeding in, in that goal. And only thing to do from here is to keep Making it bigger and better every single yeah every single year, but uh, honestly, uh, an awesome experience.